Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on matrix computation and its application. So, in the previous lecture we have discussed one example and showed that the dimensions of uh, range space and null space. So, today we are going to continue with that one. So, let us do this one. <coughs> So, today I am going to discuss another properties of the corresponding system. So, if you remember that in the previous lecture, we have discussed one example and we showed that the range of the given matrix. So, this was my matrix and we have discussed about the range space of A, range space of A transpose. And then we have also shown that the, the P matrix, the non-singular uh, non matrix P. So, the row corresponding to the 0 rows in the equivalent form and then using this one we have showed this relation that range space of P to T is equal to the null space of A transpose. So, the same thing we are going to discuss now. So, it says that suppose we have a matrix A that is m cross n and let the rank of A is equal to R and let and let we have a matrix P that is given by P 1 and P 2 as discussed in the previous lecture be a non singular matrix such that P A is equal to U that is the row echelon form. So, this will be definitely some matrix C that is R cross N and this will be 0 because the rank is R. So, this matrix is going to have only known 0 rows that is R in number and N is the, the number of variables. So, this is there where U is in row echelon form. Then, so then we are going to have one relation and this relation is that, that the range of A can be written as null space of P 2, this one. So, where this is my P 2. Earlier we also discussed that n a transpose that is a range space of p 2 transpose. So, this is we have discussed in the previous lecture. Now, I want to discuss this one. So, as we have done previous example. So, from there I will, so this one already we know. So, P 2 I am just going to get the, what is the P 2 there. So, basically if you see then my P 2 is minus 2 1 0 0. So, that is my P 2, my P 2 is basically this row minus 2 1 0 0. So, this is my row vector. Now, I want to find what will be the null space of P 2. So, basically we are going to write P 2 that is minus 2 1 0 0. So, it is a row vector that is basically 1 cross 4 and then I will apply over. So, this will give me this into 
I am applying over the element 4. So, I am suppose I am taking it as a x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4. So, it is basically 4 cross 1 and then it should be equal to 0. Because whenever we are going to deal with n a, it means we are going to deal with this system. So, I am going to deal with the null space of P 2 implies that P 2, this is our matrix that of dimension 1 cross 4 with this where the number of variables and that is putting equal to 0. So, from here I can write this as a minus 2 x 1 plus x 2 equal to 0. So, I am getting only one equation from here. So, this one we have done only one equation is there and my matrix was from R 5 to R 4. So, that also uh, we have to keep in mind that our matrix was 4 cross 5. So, moving from R 5 to R 4. Now, this is our equation. Now, from here you can see that x 3 and x 4 are basically free variable because that are multiplied by 0. So, from here I can say that this is the equation number 1 and x 3, x 4 are free variables. So, from here now from here I can write down. So, now from the previous uh, matrix we came to know that the rank of A is 3. Okay. So, and the range of A is this one. So, it is made up of this one. So, this one we are going to do now. So, from here I can say that my x 1 or maybe I can write my x 2 can be written as 2 x 1. So, this relation I can write x 2 is becoming equal to this one. So, from here I can write that my x 2 is equal to 2 x 1 okay, and x 1 is always there and x 3 x 4. So, this is my vector I am going to have. So, that vectors can be written as because this vector is basically I need to find the values of x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4. So, x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 can be written like this way. So, from here I can write, I can take the x 1 common. So, it will give me 1, 2, 0, 0 plus I can write x 3 that is 0, 0, 1, 0 plus x 4 that is 0, 0, 0, it means that the null space of P 2 is spanned by this set of factors 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 0 and you can check that this set is linearly independent and is so this will be the subspace so it belongs to the set r4 okay and this will be so now if you see from here that in this case my range space of a is spanned by the element 1 2 3 1 2 4 6 4 and 1 2 6 3 but there are three number of uh, vectors are there and they are linearly independent. The same thing is coming here only the thing is that we have the same number of uh, vectors, but these vectors are not the same as the 
we have uh, got in that uh, range space of A. But we, so in this case we can say that the basis vectors has been changed, but the dimension is same. So from here you can check. So from here you can imply that the null space of P2 is always equal to, so this is can be written as range space of A. So this one we have done. Okay, so this one, this way we can write down these things. So after doing this one, now we going to start with the some another things that linear independence. and matrices. So, suppose we have a matrix A that is M cross N matrix. Now, first one that each of each of the following statement is equivalent to saying that the column of A form a linearly independent. So, this word can be written as Li. So, linearly independent set if the null space of A contains only 0 element. So, each of the following statement is equivalent to saying that the columns of A forms a linearly independent sets. So, because in this case we have a matrix A m cross n. So, I know that it is going to have n number of columns and m number of rows. So, the columns of A forms a linearly independent set. It is equivalent to saying that the null space of A is 0 and the rank of A is going to be equal to n, the number of variables. So, this is a 0 null space. Second one. Now I can talk about rows of A are linearly independent set. It is equivalent to saying that null space of A transpose is just the 0 element, and the second one is that the rank of A transpose is equal to M and M is the number of rows in that given matrix. So, now the third case is that what will happen when the matrix A M cross N is a square matrix, square matrix is when M is equal to N. Then a is non singular. So, that is equivalent to saying so this is equivalent to saying the first one is that the columns of A the columns of A forms a linearly independent set. So, all the columns of A are linearly independent to each other and the second one is that the rows 
of A forms a linearly independent set. It means that the rows of the matrix is also linearly independent to each other. So, these things we have to keep in mind. <coughs> now, using this one, so it is very clear, so I can discuss the proof. Now, column of A forms the linear independent set and the rows of A form the linear independent sets. So, we can say that suppose I have the matrix A that is M cross N matrix. Now, so I am saying that the columns of A are linearly independent. So, this one I am first I am doing this one saying that the column of A are linearly independent that is equivalent to saying that the null space contain 0 or the rank is equal to n. So, this is a proof for first one. So, I am saying that the column of A are linearly independent which implies that so I have a matrix and that matrix is basically it has the column. So, that column I can write as A 1, A 2, A n, n number of columns and these are the linearly independent. So, these are linearly independent means that if I take the linear combination alpha 1 A 1 plus alpha 2 A 2 alpha n A n is equal to 0. So, it is there then since A 1, A 2 are A n are L i which implies that the set alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n that belongs to R n belongs to. So, this is belongs to R n. So, it is going to be that. So, if, if it is a linearly independent then I can write even that alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2 alpha n all are 0. So, if all are a 0 then from here which implies that the set alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n belongs to null space of A. But in this case all the vectors are linearly independent and showed that this alpha is are 0. So, from here I can say that null space of A will be only 0 element because all the alpha is are 0. So, this is ok we are able to show this one that the null space will contain only 0 element and now from here you can say that this is equivalent to saying that the matrix. So, now null space of A contain only 0 element which implies that the matrix A is non singular. If it is a now these things I can say only when it is a square matrix. So, I cannot like this one. So, from here I can write that from here I can say that the rank of matrix A is equal to n. So, that I can say because null space contains only 0 element. So, I can say that the rank of the matrix will be n. So, that is rank of A is n because if it is a square matrix then I know that the rank of the matrix will be A n and then it will be non singular. So, this the same thing we can write down. So, similarly we 
can prove the other two so this is the other two properties what we have or the statements so other two statements because in that case we have to deal with only rows so the rows of a are linear independent then the same way we can write down that the null space of a transpose will be 0 and the rank will be equal to the number of rows and if it is square matrix then we can say because if m is equal to n now if m is equal to n then rank of a is equal to n which implies that matrix a is non singular also the rank of a is equal to the rank of a transpose so that we already know because we take the matrix a find the rank then you just take the transpose of that matrix and then again find the rank they will be same so this we already know the rank of the matrix and its transpose are always same <laughs> so these things we are using this one now so i want to use this uh, statements for solving some real applications that if the null space contains only zero element then the this is true that the given columns are linearly independent or the corresponding rows are linearly independent or if the matrix is a square matrix then it is it will be a non singular so these things we are going to use for discussing some important things so the first thing we are going to discuss is very important topic and that is called diagonal dominance so a matrix a so that is of order n cross n so i am talking about the square matrix is said to be diagonal dominant or in some books sometime it is also written as also called strictly diagonal dominant in some books it is written as strictly diagonal dominant so a matrix a is said to be diagonal dominant if i take the elements at the main diagonal talking the modulus value so if it is greater than equal to summation a i j magnitude j is moving from 1 to n and i is not equal to j for each i that is equal to 1 to up to n so this is called the diagonal dominant matrix for example suppose i take the matrix a that is uh, i may take 3 cross 3 so in this case suppose i write here 4 minus 1 minus 2 and it is minus 5 1 3 and 1 2 and this is suppose i am taking minus 4 so in this case if you see 
then this is my diagonal elements and from here I can say that the 4 is greater than minus 1 plus minus 2. So, that is in the first row I am talking about and the second row we are writing diagonal element. So, minus 5 modulus value is greater than 1 plus 3 and similarly minus 4 is greater than 1, 2. So, everywhere it is coming, so it is called diagonal dominant matrix. But suppose I take another matrix B and if I write the same matrix 4, minus 1, minus 2, 1, minus 5, 3, but here suppose I write 2, 2, minus 4. So, in this case if you see that starting from here then in this case minus 4 that will be equal to 2 plus 2. So, in this case uh, we are going to have only equality sign. So, this sign is not there. So, in this case we say that it is not diagonally dominant. So, this type of matrices are playing a wider role in numerical analysis or for the convergence of some uh, numerical methods or iterative methods. So, the based on this one I want to show. So, now we know that that the iterative methods like Gauss Jordan or Gauss Seidel methods, the the sufficient condition for convergence is diagonal dominant matrix. So, iterative methods like Gauss Jordan or Gauss Seidel, we know that the sufficient condition for convergence is that the matrix should be diagonal dominant. It means we have a matrix A that is equal to x equal to b. So, this is a system of equations are there and this is suppose n cross n. So, I know that this type of system can be sold with the help of for example, I take we have done Gauss elimination. So, in the Gauss elimination if you see we use the pivot pivoting. So, pivoting is basically to have the largest element at the at the diagonal places. So, this type of things are also related with the diagonal dominant matrix and others are iterative methods. So, this is a direct method basically. and another is the iterative method. So, iterative method is like Gauss, Jordan or Seidel. So, these type of methods are if we apply we have we are not sure that whether we are going to have the solution or not, but in this case we are going to get the solution if the matrix is diagonal dominant. So, that means the that is called the sufficient condition that if the matrix is diagonal dominant. So, if A is diagonal dominant A 
if A is diagonal dominant which implies that Gauss, Jordan or Seidel are convergent. But the converse is not true always. If the, the methods are converging that also does not mean that it the matrix should be diagonal dominant. But if the matrix is diagonal dominant then definitely it is going to converge. So, these type of things are very important to, uh, to deal with the iterative processes to for solving the system of equation. So, that things uh, is uh, we are going to discuss in the next lecture. So, let me stop here. So, in the uh, today lecture we have discussed about one another properties of the that is related with the matrices that if the null space of the matrix corresponding matrix is only the 0 space then we can have that the given matrix is going to have the columns are going to be linearly independent or the rows are going to be linearly independent. And then we have also discussed another definition of diagonal dominant matrix. So, we will use this one uh, to show some properties in the next lecture. So, thanks for watching, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.